Now we've all been there thinking long and hard about how we can earn a little bit of extra money and you've tried a few ideas but they just haven't gone to plan and let's face it it does get really frustrating. You might consider being a car trader at some point but getting to the top is quite a difficult battle but understand to be a car trader you only need to start with one car and in this video I'm going to be asking two questions that I keep getting asked and then questions are Calvin how do I get into the car trader and how do I go about earning money as a used car dealer? Guys relax. In this video, we're going to talk about multiple ways that you can earn money as a used car dealer. These methods will appeal to those who are already in the car trade and to those who are looking to get into the car trade. And hopefully for those that are just starting out in the car trade, this video will give you that kick up the arse that you need to go out and buy your first bit of stock and get your first deal done. Let's get on with it. Before we get properly into the video, let me quickly give you tip number one. For those starting out in the car trade, whilst it's considered a hobby and not a business, you won't be expected to pay any income tax. It's also rumoured that you are allowed to own and sell up to six personal cars per year. But please do seek tax advice from a credited accountant. Now the first thing I want to talk about is sourcing. Now when I started out car trading, or what I would do is I would find people that are looking for a certain type of car and I would go out and find it for them. We get asked to do this quite often, but I don't actually do it anymore, purely because it takes a lot of time and it takes our energy around and it takes our energy away from the current cars that we've got in stock. But it is a great way to earn money. Basically what will happen is a customer will give you an exact specification of a car that they're looking for. They're too busy to go hunting themselves. They trust you to go and find them a car. You then go on the hunt for the car, find them their exact car, sell it with a profit in it. One thing I would say is if you do choose this as a method to earn money in the car trade, do try and get a holding deposit or some kind of fee up front before you go searching because you could find yourself wasting a whole lot of time. But I have done this myself a lot over the years. I've earned some good money out of it. And more importantly, when I set out as a used car dealer, I didn't have no money. It was a great way for me to earn money uh, without forking out for stock. I actually done one recently on my channel. I went and bought an Audi SQ7 for one of my good customers. I found him the exact spec car that he wanted. I sold it to him and I earned a profit. So you can see vehicle sourcing is a great way to earn money, specifically for those that don't have any money from the outset. Another great way to earn money as a used car dealer, and it's something that we still do now, and that's SOR, sale or return. Basically, a customer will give you a car. Uh, one car as an example is like Benz E63 AMG, which I actually ended up buying. Uh, but another great example was the Abarth 595 Competition that I've done a video in uh, on my previous video. Uh, that car there is a great bit of stock. We didn't buy that car, we offered to sell it on behalf of the customer. We advertised it at retail money, returned the customer uh, an amount of money or charge the customer a percentage of the overall sale amount uh, upon sale. And then once it's sold, you take the money, give it to the customer. You've got a happy customer on one end who's just bought themselves a nice new car. You've got a happy customer on the other end who's just sold their car for strong money. The downfall is sometimes you're negotiating at two ends because you've got to try and do a deal with both customers. Me personally, I prefer to just buy the car, get it in myself. If it needs any work into it, I'll get it done myself. And then when I sell the car, I know exactly how much I paid for it and I know exactly how much money I'm going to earn. But it's not to say that I rule the sale returns out because I do think they are really good. And I do know that there are many companies out there that operate the majority of their stock on a sale return basis and they do earn very good money out of it. So again, if you are sitting out as a used car dealer, and you have no money, that is a great way to stock your site with cars that you don't even own. And in fact, when me and Leon set out on our journey as car traders, that is exactly what we've done. A lot of the cars that we sold back then were sale returns and we earned money, we moved forward and we managed to grow our business from it. Scrap! Now don't just assume that if a car is a scrap car that there is no money in it. Every single thing, used item, cars, motorbikes, bloody watches, whatever, has got a, a, a sale value, right? Whether it's a lump of scrap metal or a, a perfectly brand new supercar, yeah? Everything has a value. Some people say to me, Cal, it looks like you've got loads of bloody scrap in stock. Yes, we sell a lot of scrap. I'll happily buy a car for a couple of hundred pounds and maybe send it to the scrapyard for 400 quid, earn a couple of hundred pounds as a margin. Uh, some of them ain't quite so easy to sell, but once you've bought them, you will eventually sell them and make a little profit. Another way to earn money out of scrap is dismantling cars. So if you don't want to take that car straight to the scrapyard or sell it to your local scrap guy who will take the wheels off, take the battery off, take the cat off and scrap it all, uh, what you can do yourself is you can dismantle it. There's been, there is, 
There are some great businesses out there that have earned an absolutely crazy amount of money out of dismantling cars. Do not rule out scrap. One man's rubbish is another man's gold. And I am one person for valuing everything. So do not rule out anything, all right? If you think you can earn a profit on it, give it a shot. Salvage, what a great one to talk about after scrap. Now, a lot of people that I know have dealt in salvage cars. Uh, I look at them myself and think, God, that looks like a lot of work. I personally do not deal with salvage cars. I am not handy with cars myself. I do not get hands on, I can't fix cars. I've got multiple garages around me that I work with to fix our cars, but they've got enough work to do as it is without me piling uh, big salvage repairs on top of them as well. But, like I say, there are lots of people that I know personally that have earned great money out of salvage cars. There are multiple salvage auctions out there. You know, I bought my uh, Golf R from Copart recently. I paid far too much money for, for that car. That is a bad example. Do not use that as a good example. But had I got that for less money, you know, I would have been in for a chance of earning a profit on it. And that is the exact point with every single one of these methods to earning money in the car trade. The absolute priority is buying. Providing you buy right, you will always earn money. Like I just said just now, every single item has a demand at a certain value. And providing you buy it below that value, you're in for a chance of making a profit. And I think salvage cars are another great example of how you can earn money out of cars. And some people even buy them, don't repair them, and sell them as they are and make a profit. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Certain things have still got demand to other traders. Why on earth would you try and work on it, get it fixed, and sell it a higher value when you can quickly get out of it, earn a small margin, and move on to your next one. Import and export. Now, uh, this is a great way to earn money. It's not something that I've ever done. I sort of tell a lot. Well, a few years ago, I did buy a Hummer H2, black one, you might have seen it on my channel. Uh, my friend actually brought that into the country from Romania, and I bought it off him unregistered. I got it registered myself, I sold it, I made a profit. It was a bit of a palaver, a lengthy process, but I did make a good amount of money on that car, and I got to tick that Hummer H2 off of my bucket list. Now, a lot of the cars that we sell here at Bing Car, we are a trade sales center, so we sell the majority of our cars, go off to other car traders. The majority of our cars are sold unprepared, at prices that appeal to other car traders, okay? The reason why we do that is because we buy so many cars that we can't possibly keep on top of all of the preparation to getting these cars prepared for retail. So we literally work on small margins and keep the ball moving. But the reason why I say that is because there's a handful of traders that we deal with that deal with import and export. A couple of them will say uh, export cars to Jamaica, to Pakistan, uh, to different parts of Europe, and they will earn a, a lot of money by buying cars from us at Binka taking them abroad and selling them overseas. And again, I do know of multiple companies that import cars, Japanese cars in particular, which is a great market at the minute, into this country. They prepare them for sale. A lot of them are sourced as well, so the customer will go to the company and say, can you find me uh, a Honda Integra DC5 Type R in white, uh, a facelift car with X amount of miles. I'll pay you a deposit for the car right now. You go and find it for me, and in six months time, I'll pay the outstanding and I'll collect it. It's great, it's a great business model. It does work. You do have to have patience, but it is something that I would definitely recommend looking into if that suits you. Specialise in something. Now this is something that I cannot stress enough. Understand who you are, what you're about, what you're drawn to, and what your sort of quality is, your sporte. Like for me, I know that I don't repair cars myself. I'm not handy with fixing cars, so I cannot sit here and say, I wanna buy salvage cars, for example, because there's no way I'm gonna be able to do that, right? When I started out car trading, what we used to do is we used to buy and sell a lot of courses, right? We've done Vauxhall courses, we had lots of them available for sale. We had a guy that could supply us courses parts. We had another guy that could supply, uh, that could repair courses for us. So we had the whole thing well organized. We had a farm that we could get all the courses to, and it was just a great little business. The margins were quite small. It was hard buying, which going back to what I said earlier, trying to buy all the time is very, very difficult. But when you know a, the sale point of a car, which we knew bang on with courses, it was quite easy buying them. And because we knew all the common little problems, which there was a lot of common little problems with them, you slowly get to know all of the symptoms with all of the issues with them cars. Now I know there are companies out there that specialize in certain types of cars. In fact, I've got an E46 M3 out here now that I'm midway through selling to an E46 M3 specialist. That trader's come to me and said, Calvin, that car's worth 20 grand. Why are you selling it for such little money? And the reason that I'm selling it for little money because I am not preparing that car. The arches are, have gone a little bit rusty. Um, that's about it really. Debatably, it could do with a full respray. I'm happy to sell that car 
with a small margin. It's an 06 plate manual coupe. It's a great car. For me, it ain't a problem. Someone will buy that, tidy it up, and they'll make a profit on it. And that is exactly what my business is all about. And that's another great example of specialising one type of car. Uh, it could be commercials, it could be courses, first time cars, um, I don't know, Japanese cars. I used to just stick to Evos, whatever, yeah? There's loads of different opportunities out there. Decide yourself what you're about. Now this one's an interesting one, trade or retail. Now going back to my uh, M3 specialist uh, example, that guy is an M3 retail specialist. He will not trade out an M3 because for him, he would rather prepare that car to a high standard and get top money for it. He deserves to get top money for it because he's put all the effort into sourcing that car, preparing it and putting his name on it. Whereas me, because we're essentially a car buying company, we buy too many cars. In fact, there's lots that I'd say no to that we're getting offered all these cars that I have to just work on small margins and keep that ball rolling. So for me, selling to the trade only is just the best way to go about it. Now we have recently launched Binker Retail, which I know a lot of you know about. And Binker Retail is essentially us selling cars, not at trade money, but at retail money. And those cars are cars that come through the car buying shop and they don't need any preparation. Benz E63 AMG is a great example of that. It's not a very old car. It's only done 20,000 miles. It's absolutely flawless as far as uh, preparation is concerned. It doesn't need any prep, doesn't need any tires, doesn't need any bodywork. It is ready to retail. Now I would consider just trading that car out with no warranty, no guarantee as it is for less money. That suits me, no problem at all. But the other option is I sell that car as a retail car with a warranty and a guarantee that that car is not gonna go wrong. I'm obviously gonna want stronger money for it. So there are two options there. There's a trade sale, a retail sale. But for me personally, I'd rather work on a bigger stock turnover, which is smaller margins, but it does keep the cars coming in and going out at a decent pace. But back to the point, the main difference between a trade car and a retail car is a trade car uh, generally will be at a price that appeals to traders and a retail car will appeal to retail buyers only. Retail buyers will pay top money for a car, but they will expect it to be fully prepared. They will want a warranty on it and they will possibly want finance on it. Which brings me on to the next subject. Finance, now we don't do lots of finance here at Binka purely because like I said, the majority of our business, say 90% of our business is trade to trade. Traders don't come to us for finance, yeah? But 10% of our cars, like I said, we've recently done Binka Retail. We do offer that, those cars with uh, a warranty and with finance. Now, the ones that we do sell, they're fully prepared. They are a higher premium. You do get financially rewarded for selling the car on finance. It is a higher risk for you as a trader, uh, but you can earn more money out of selling cars on finance. Now, I understand that for those that are, are sitting out in the car trade, you won't be selling cars on finance, but it's definitely something to look into because it's actually a great way to earn additional money when selling cars in retail. Right, so that's pretty much it now. Now all of the methods that I've mentioned in today's video, uh, they are, some of them would appeal more to traders that are already established and others will appeal more to traders that are just setting out. Now, uh, one thing is for sure that as you go on your journey as a car trader, you'll pretty much dabble in all of the methods that I've mentioned in today's video. Now, ultimately the risk you take as a used car dealer is buying these cars, yeah? If you are buying these cars, you are then at risk of losing money. Now, don't get me wrong, I do not earn money on every single car that I buy. And if you are sitting out in the trade and you've just lost money on a car, don't let that knock you down. That does happen, right? Even at my level, I buy cars sometimes and I lose money. But that is why you deserve to earn money as a car trader, because you are taking risks all the time when you buy cars. And as you work your way through certain types of cars, you gain knowledge along the way. Now I've literally sold, bought and sold thousands of cars over the years, so my knowledge on cars is absolutely brilliant and I'm very lucky to be in the position that I'm in. But as I go on my journey, there's lots of different areas of the car market that I do still need to learn about and I will learn about. And no doubt whilst I'm on that journey, there'll be times when I lose money as well, all right? So don't, if you, so if you do lose money, sorry, don't be disheartened. It's part of the risk of being a used car dealer, all right? It does happen probably more often than you want it to, but it's part of the parcel, all right? And understand, really, you as a used car dealer, you're a trader of a used item, okay? And although you earn money when you sell that used item, really and truly, the money is earned when you buy it. And make sure you buy it correctly. There's two main factors when you're buying and selling something. One, the value of it, and two, the demand of it. If you're buying something for the right money that is highly demanded, you can't go wrong with it. But if you buy something for the wrong money that is 
doesn't have much demand at all. It will sit around for a while. Every single car that I've ever bought, I've always sold. I've never ever got stuck with a single car, so don't ever think, like some people say, oh, I can't sell that car, it's stuck with that one that I'll never sell. They talk rubbish, everything sells. Sometimes you might lose a little bit of money on it. That's the absolute worst case scenario, but across the board, you'll earn money, you'll keep moving stock, and you'll keep moving forward. So don't be too scared, take the risk, take the punt, and you will earn money, all right? So I'm gonna leave it as that, I think. I think I've covered everything. I probably should do more of these style of videos because I think a lot of people are gonna like this. Uh, but I'll see how it gets on. I could do a video about buying in general because ultimately, like I say, as a used car trader, you are a buyer of cars. Although you are a seller of cars, your thing really is buying. And I think I should really talk about uh, the whole buying side of it. Now I've got a company called The Car Buying Shop. That is like the front end of Binker. Binker's uh, the trade to trade side of it. Car Buying Shop is, we'll talk about all of that in another video, but yeah. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you like this video. If you've got any ideas for uh, other car trade related videos, if you want me to sit down and do conversations with you about other subjects, please let me know. Give me some ideas in the comments below. But for now, I'm gonna leave it as this. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you like this video. If you did like this video, hit like. If you're new to my channel, hit subscribe for a new video every Wednesday and Sunday at six o'clock. And if you're on Instagram, give me a follow on Instagram, at Calvin's Car Diary, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye. In the next episode of Diary of Car Trader, it's another car trade related video. It's a whole week of my purchases and my sales at Binker. That video will be live on Sunday at six o'clock. I'll see you then.